Automakers, just like any other company in the world, want brand loyalty. It's why McDonald's has a playland. You gotta hook them young. The Nissan Kicks is sort of like that. It's fun, shiny, inexpensive, and you really shouldn't expect too much from some of its features because, did I mention fun? There's nothing wrong with shiny fun. My first car was shiny fun. We should revel in vehicles that make us feel good even though they can't outrun a city bus. Starting at $18,450, the Nissan Kicks is clearly targeted at someone buying their first new vehicle. It's got this quirky styling and of course the name Kicks, which I'm not sure is a reference to shoes or just kicking it. And frankly, the moniker is something that someone over the age of 35 definitely does not want on their credit report. But who cares about the olds? This car is for young people. Well, at least young people who can afford a monthly car payment. So let's live like Generation Z and cruise around in this wacky little Nissan. The tech that is in the car is well thought out. There isn't, well, adaptive cruise control or lane keep assist because, well, those are costly. It does have a nice suite of safety features though. It has blind spot detection, it has emergency braking, and it has rear cross traffic alerts, which are great and they're very helpful for new drivers or seasoned. Another nice surprise is the rear camera. In addition to helping you back up, you can add the 360 degree view of the around view monitor. This is something that you typically find on higher priced vehicles, but it's so helpful, especially for anyone that lives in the city and has to parallel park. Plus, the image quality, while not great, is higher than expected. The monitor shares the same space as the infotainment system, which is actually pretty sparse. In fact, it's more of a media center than anything. It doesn't have navigation. Instead, it's more of a conduit for your smartphones. So if you're used to navigating with your smartphone, you're gonna be able to do it here via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. As for the media itself, there's an option for a Bose headrest with a speaker inside. I think it sounds better with the speaker next to my ears, but I really can't tell. What it is, is a fun thing to tell your friends about. The display is sharp, but there are some latency issues with the system itself. Like the engine, the in-dash tech isn't in a hurry. The dash console is bright and easy to navigate with details about the car, tires, and what you're listening to only a few clicks away. It's agreeable like the kicks itself. Like all entry-level vehicles since the dawn of time, the kicks doesn't have a lot of acceleration. Sure, you can stomp on the accelerator and it'll make a lot of noise, but not so much, you know, speed. Its 1.6 liter four cylinder engine produces a paltry 125 horsepower and 115 foot pounds of torque. It's not terrible, you can get up to speed on the highway and around town, and it'll handle its own in the cul de sac or at a stoplight. The steering is about as tight as the elastic on a five year old pair of underwear. You spin it and the crossover turns, but it's more of an invitation than an immediate action. Oddly enough, when it is turning, it handled the twisties in Marin County surprisingly well. I had a blast hitting corners in the little SUV when I expected to be trying to counteract intense body roll. Kudos to the Nissan engineering team for pulling that off. The ride clearance and cargo space of the Nissan Kicks is great if you want to get into the SUV or crossover game. It has enough room in the trunk that you can store most of your outdoorsy lifestyle stuff. And it's tall enough that you can take it off road without worrying too much about, well, let's say puncturing the gas tank. What it doesn't have is all wheel drive. It's not even an option, which is sort of a bummer if you live anywhere where it snows. The biggest surprise in this vehicle are the seats. They're extremely comfortable. I just got out of a luxury vehicle that is, well, two of these car. That's how much it cost and those seats weren't as nice. Now, this vehicle doesn't have 800 adjustments for lumbar support or any of that, but you kind of don't need that when you start with a nice solid base. The boxy little vehicle also lends itself to lots of headroom, both in the front and back. I was comfortable in the front seats and as long as someone like me wasn't the driver or riding shotgun, my six foot three frame had no problems in the back. The interior styling isn't as quirky as the exterior, but it does have a little bit of flavor, especially in the dashboard. Now, this looks nice, but it looks like the design team ran out of cash when they actually got to the doors, which looked like someone just grabbed a piece of plastic and cut a notch in it for the latches. The plastic and vinyl materials themselves are standard fare for an inexpensive car. 
The dash again is the highlight of the inside while the doors will probably look like you trapped a pit bull in the car with scratches and nicks along the inside after a few years of driving. We all end up with something as our first car. With a starting price of under 20 grand, the Kicks makes a good case for a vehicle that's fun and checks off the desire to own an SUV with all the utility that comes with that. It's easy to option the vehicle out to a little above $20,000 but it's still cheaper than most of the rest of the stuff that's on the road. Its only real competitor at this price range is the Kia Soul, which is another quirky looking vehicle. The Nissan Kicks is a little SUV or crossover as the marketing team would have you believe that fits most of your friends and their gear. Now I'm assuming Gen Z rides a lot of electric skateboards and they'll fit back there. It's not packed with a lot of features, but the ones it does have, they do quite a lot. It's Nissan's play for the young hip crowd buying their first new car. And overall, it's doing a good job. <laughs>